Welcome back to Plus Politics. One of the programs of the federal government's national social investment program designed to reduce poverty in Nigeria is trader money. In a twist of events, some of the beneficiaries are reported to be reluctant to repay the loans. This was stated by the Kwara State Focal Person for the NSIP, Hajia Bashira Abdurazak Sanusi. She stated that those that disbursed the money do not have records of beneficiaries like phone numbers and addresses, thus making it difficult to track them for repayment. Still with us on uh, the program this evening, Ose Aneni, a political analyst and, of course, a hotelier. Thank you very much uh, for joining us once again. Glad to still be here. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the conversation by quoting, once again, the uh, Kwara State Focal Person for the National Social Investment Program, Abdul Razak Sanusi. She said, uh, in quote, those that disburse the money do not have records of beneficiaries like phone numbers and addresses, and thus it's making it difficult to track them for repayment. Help make this clearer to understand, if you can. I mean, it's, it's very easy. Um, and I'll speak a little bit more passionately about this because um, of the insidious role I think this particular program played in the 2019 elections. Um, the trader money program um, was rolled out just before the elections in a manner that seemed to indicate that it was being used to induce votes for the government in power. Um, and this is not just me. Independent observers of the election, 2019 elections, um, have come to that conclusion as well. And you would see it wasn't just a general election. You would see how when you have off-cycle elections, um, or Shun or Ekiti, um, a month to the elections or a couple of weeks to the elections, this trader money ca carnival will roll into the state and they'll go to markets and they'll start disbursing cash to traders. Um, the, the unspoken contract was that this is what you will get if you support us. Um, so I, 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 regardless of, of whatever financial arguments could have been made for the trader money program, and I'll get to that in a bit. You know, it's, the way it was deployed in 2019, I think, um, was disgraceful. Now, going to the, looking at the program itself, um, I spoke in last segment about how social investment programs sort of like serve as a safety net, you know. So when you give someone 10,000 Naira, that 10,000 Naira is not going to help them get out of poverty. It will keep their stores open. It may help them pay taxes, help them buy some more stock. But, you know, it's, it's the quantum of, of, of the loans was so microscopic that, you know, it would not kickstart any engine of growth or prosperity. Um, and also, just because of the, the manner it was, it was rolled out. It, it was bound to fail. It was not collateralized. There was there was no there was very very lax uh, record taking. Um, so it it was bound to fail. And I think what particularly frustrates me about the trader money program was that it's not the first of these sorts of schemes. In Kebbi State, for instance, when um, we wrote this government rolled out the Ankos Borage program, again a very similar scheme that would give. Um, small amounts of money to farmers to help them um, uh, boost productivity. What, what was reported was that most of these farmers used it to um, repair houses, to buy wives, and, and said when the people came back to, to take the money that, or to collect the loans back that this is our, our share of, of um, democracy. We were told that this is our share for, for voting for Baba. You know, so it was it was hilarious in in Kebbi State. I think the government took about seventy thousand farmers to court for their refusal to pay. You know, so these these programs, you know, have a history of failure just because of the way they are structured. Um, when you have people taking cash to markets, um, there's no accountability, there's no transparency. So how how in any any sane society do you expect loans to be repaid? or for these programs to be sustainable. Um, you know, so in, in, a, in a nutshell, it's not unsurprising. We keep up doing, doing the same thing. 
I hear that the central bank is again rolling out similar microcredit uh, schemes in, you know, to sort of like boost productivity within this COVID period. It's using the same format, the same template. It will still fail. The only benefit I see is that, you know, money does eventually get into the hands of the end users. But any expectation that um, these loans will be repaid is, is, is an unrealistic one. Uh, there's an argument, you know, about the process uh, with which the trade-up money was uh, uh, um, executed. You know, some say that it wasn't necessarily a cash-in-hand um, uh, process. It was via bank accounts and the likes. Um, is there any confirmation about how exactly it was, you know, these funds were disbursed uh, to the beneficiaries? I mean, semantics, you know, so if it was, if it was true BVN, for instance, as this argument is claiming, then you don't need phone numbers. You have the, the, the detail, the biometrics of, of the, the, the recipients. That's what the BVN is. You know, your bank verification number. You take your fingerprints, your name, your number, everything. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's semantic. And I think it's just, you know, you know, the horse has bolted and we're now trying to close the stable door. Um, the trader money, it's failed. I hope we never see it again. Um, there are two elections uh, around the corner. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, we didn't see the trader money caravan in Edo State. Uh, and, I, and I think just, I understand. I un so let me just try and, let me, let me try and reframe this. I understand the president's desire to help Nigerians. I understand his welfareist um, leanings. You know, you want to help people. But, you know, you cannot help people without strong institutional frameworks. I think this program should have been disbursed, maybe through the banks, maybe through microfinance organizations. Um, I don't think, you know, the, there's a lack of efficiency when government institutions are running these sorts of programs. You know, the gaps are so wide that it, it allows abuse, it allows corruption. And, and if we really want to help, I think, you know, maybe part of what the uh, Atelier Peter Side um, Committee has to do is try to find a way to really develop strong institutional frameworks yeah. that in the first instance allow the money reach the beneficiaries. And in the second instance, because we are a broke country, allow the federal government to reclaim these loans. How much of an indictment would you say this should be on the current administration um, um, if we're keeping it in mind that, you know, we, we should be trying to save at this time? And so if the government itself um, allows funds like this to be passed hand to hand around uh, the country without any clarification of how it's going to come back, without any, you know, any care taken into ensuring that the money does, you know, get back to the government. Is this an indictment on the government? Um, it is. Um, I, I think maybe not on their, on not, it's not an indictment on their desire to do good. I think it's a, an indictment on their, cap on their capacity to execute um, whatever plans they have. Um, I think they need to focus on priorities. You know, so we are the poverty capital of the world. We have our GDP is 6.1% uh, in the negative. Yeah. We are pro projected to face a depression. So I won't come on here and say that the government should suspend the social welfare programs. I think maybe now more than ever before, we need them. But what I will say is that there needs to be a shrinking of government and there needs to be sort of, even within this social welfare program, a prioritization of how these funds are most eff best efficiently used. Um, and talking about priorities, for instance, in the, in the, in the vice president's um, COVID uh, sustainability plan, it will amaze you to know that there was an insert there from the Ministry of Aviation to spend billions of Naira on um, a national carrier. Now, it, it boggles the mind to think that, you know, in the middle of a global pandemic, government is willing to invest billions of Naira in a national carrier when people are not traveling, when you need to stay at home and stay safe, when there are more pressing fundamental ground level granular needs that they need to meet. 
So I, I think the government just really needs to, you know, take a step back and prioritize what it needs to spend of very, very scarce resources on. Um, the previous, my previous um, guest, the, the previous guest on here um, said we should stop borrowing. Unfortunately, we can't, you know, we, we don't have money. We, we unfortunately need to continue borrowing. But what we can do is make sure that every dollar we borrow is spent in the best possible manner um, we can. Okay, so, so now I, I want to go back to something that you said um, um, in you know, your speech earlier about the beneficiaries saying that this is part of their national cake. Um, so I want you to speak from the angle of that trader who has received uh, money from the government and is refusing to pay back. Would you agree with uh, uh, Abdul Razak Sanusi um, that they are maybe ungrateful? <laughs> so, so, so what, what typically would be the dividends of democracy? It would be security. It would be, you know, infrastructure. It would be power. It would be good health care. Yeah. It would be all of these things. That, that is what typically you would pay um, as tax and get back as dividends of democracy when you elect someone. So every, almost, you know, I don't know of any, any state that has a wide network of portable water, that's pipe-borne water, that's functional. I think maybe Abuja has epileptic um, pipe-borne water supply. Um, so almost everybody is buying water from uh, Merua or, you know, from the Yusinke borehole. Almost, you know, if you are lucky, you have a generator. You know, you are paying for your vigilantes or neighborhood security watches or a mega guard. Yeah. Um, entire neighborhoods are tarring their own roads. You know, so you, you see, even in markets, you, you see market communities coming together to put in security, um, do infrastructure within the markets themselves. Um, so, you know, the, the average Nigerian will ask, will, will rightly ask, and, and it's a problem that we saw, um, I think, from the Akita elections, uh, really, really manifest, where people started hawking their votes and coming out to, to tell partisan actors that, look, we only see you on election day. How much is my vote work, is worth to you? You know, so I, I think what government needs to do is, is you know, almost it, it needs to, to show Nigerians that it's, you know, it is deserving of our trust. It needs to start really um, investing in things that matter to people on the ground, in security, in infrastructure, in healthcare at the basic, most primary level. And until it does that, I think Nigerians will see, because everybody cannot be a minister or a DJ or a parastata, I think Nigerians will see anything that comes from the central bank as a fair game for them to take home. Um, I don't think they are ungrateful. Um, I think if uh, firmer controls were put in place, they would have been unable to take advantage of the program. Um, but if government fails to do the basic, it doesn't serve um, Nigerians and it doesn't even serve itself by protecting its programs, um, it will unfortunately fail when it comes to executing these programs. So, so, so are, are these funds then going to be written off? Um, is that what it's seeming like? Uh, what, again, we don't have time, right? we don't have money. You've given a Kebi state farmer um, 70,000 naira and he has married a wife. How is he, taking him to court is a waste of his time, is a loss of productivity, is a waste of our time and our resources. You made a mistake. You didn't construct these programs properly enough. Learn your lessons, draw a line in the past, and let's just move forward. We really don't have time for this, um, to start chasing people who, who feel what they got from you was the dividend of democracy. I think um, we, we won't get the money back. Let's not waste our time. Okay, and um, of course, why, why I had to bring that up, you know, is because, you know, earlier I was asking if it's going to be an indictment on the government, um, seeing that it is a government that is meant to be looking for ways to save. And so if in a few months, billions of naira are doled out to people and we currently cannot account for those funds, um, we also cannot beat our chest as a nation and say that the process was successful in bringing anybody out of poverty or at least helping them, you know, live better. Um, 
how how you know does does that hurt you as a Nigerian that we're still throwing money away? I mean, um, it, it does. Um, I always will say that uh, I want to believe that the programs are well intentioned. Um, you know, but you know, we can't afford. We really can't afford to cry over spilled milk. We, yeah. we really cannot. Um, so the government, I, we just need to move past it. Um, retool or repurpose these programs in a way or manner that allows them not be, because you know, they were consumptive. They, they, they are not productive um, loans. They were literally consumptive, consumptive loans, uh, like most social welfare programs are. So if we can sh- sort of like shift um, away from consumptive spending to more pro- productive investment, uh, I, I think even the lesson, I, I would say that, you know, we learned a lesson and that lesson, um, if we had to pay trillions of naira for it, it was an expensive lesson, but I'm hoping we have learned that lesson. Okay, and of course, uh, you, you also spoke about vote buy-in and uh, the build-up to the 2019 um, elections. Um, um, how do you think the government should, you know, respond, you know, to those statements if they are made today? <laughs> well, um, I think government sort of like signal priorities and intent by um, legislation that comes out of the National Assembly and is signed by the government. So we had, um, it was an almost 900 clause karma bill that came out. It was an amazing piece of legislation. It was more than about 30 years old. It was very, very timely. Um, We've had the CBN um, Act that is in front of the president that is supposed to grant some sort of immunity to the CBN governor. Um, we're having the water, water resources bill. Um, we're having the speech bills. We're having all of that. If electoral reform was a priority for this administration, they've been here for five years now. It should have been passed. And when you signal that, you know, and the fact that it hasn't gives the signal that it's not a priority for this government. Maybe it's more important to win elections than, than it is to reform the process that leads to those victories. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I can only speculate. But if it was truly important to this government, I think after taking part in 2015 election and 2019 election, the first bill that came out of the National Assembly and the president signed should have been an electoral reform bill. Um, and maybe that's one way that, you know, we, we, we could start sort of like seeing sanity re, re, return to our electoral process. Yeah. Well, Sayaneni, thank you so much for speaking with us. Really interesting talking to you and uh, looking forward to having another conversation with you again. It was a pleasure. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. I'll be quoting a little from um, an article that I read earlier. Uh, if we're looking back, the Vision 2020 was an economic plan aimed at making Nigeria one of the 20 most developed and largest economies in the world in the year 2020. Here we are. The vision was introduced in 2007 at the tail end of the Olusha Gombasanjo regime, but no concrete action was taken towards actualizing the vision. Um, eventually, the Yaradwa administration gave the vision an impetus by making it a cardinal objective in achieving its own seven-point agenda. But still, in Nigeria, various developmental plans have been initiated to achieve national development goals. But experiences have, of that, on all of them, have been mostly failure. If you remember well enough from Vision 2000, Vision 2010, uh, Vision 2015 even, they were all initiated to give hope to the common man. Uh, but 20 years later, here we are. There are certain factors that make it even harder to have faith in these visions and agendas. The absence of science and technological development, inadequate infrastructural facilities, decay and ineffective educational sectors, lack of policy and consistency and continuity, lack of budget discipline. The problem in Nigeria is not that of initiating good and perfect ideas. We have a lot of them, but turning these ideas into concrete results is always lacking. And that lack of effective implementation of government policy constitutes one of the major impediments to national development in Nigeria. 
And that's all we have for you tonight on Plus Politics. Uh, news on the hour comes up next. My name is Osaogi Ogbonwan. Join us same time, same, uh, of course, here on Plus TV Africa tomorrow for another edition of Plus Politics.